Well, it has been a few days. We've had a chance to digest, calm down a little bit uh, after the Blue Jays getting swept by the Seattle Mariners. No, the debacle Saturday. Forget about the sweep. The debacle Saturday. That's the key. Well, that's obviously what we're going to discuss. An 8-1 lead is uh, coughed up, and uh, they lose it 10-9. General reaction and thoughts i mean i we spent yesterday talking about it but and i'll reiterate some of the things i had to say but um give me your your thought pattern here this was not what the blue jays wanted dave hodge well my overriding uh view and question would be if charlie montoyo had been managing what would the reaction be i think we know (laughs) <laughs> so then the question is, John Schneider was managing, not Charlie Montoya. How different is the reaction based on the fact that Schneider had received good marks uh, taking over the team and getting the team into the playoffs, but all those good marks disappeared in two games against Seattle. And how do you evaluate Schneider's work and how do you uh, examine the Blue Jays future with respect to their manager based on what happened I think those are uh, important questions and I don't think there there are easy answers to them Perkins well it you know it, it, it it did not surprise me I've been waiting for this for a while I didn't expect them to piss away an eight to one lead uh, I, you know I can't even remember the the bigger one from 1929 I mean it was just uh it was nuts but this hasn't been a great bullpen all year it was a mediocre kind of middling bullpen and you know Schneider clearly panicked I mean the way he he arranged his his pitchers he wanted Romano to get two complete innings which he never ever does like uh, Schneider just uh, Schneider messed this one up, but that's you know the whole team messed up. If you ask me, they 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 did the typical Blue Jay thing. They got a big lead and started throwing peanuts in each other's hair and jumping around and pretending the game was over. And I in the fourth inning when it was eight to one, I I turned to my wife and said, "Why are they jumping up and down? This game is not over." Like I think they need an outside manager to come in here and stop putting up with all this crap that goes on with all this, all this wonderfulness, you know, uh, we're having fun. No, we're the fun team. We're this, we're that. The other thing, this team loses its concentration level very, very quickly. We've seen it. They're great in blowouts, but, but they're not so good against good teams. They have, they weren't all year. We know that. So uh, I think they need to, to, change things up in the dugout and it starts there. I I got nothing against Schneider. He seems like a a real decent guy, but, but to me, this is Leafs 2.0. Everybody comes back, all the stars come back and everybody says, well, whatever happened. And, you know, in the Leafs case happened for years and years and years and years, but everybody says, oh, well, that's not the real thing. The real thing is we're the champions. We're the greatest, blah, blah, blah. And the same people come back. And the same thing keeps happening. Well, I'd shut that off right now and uh, and go a different way, if, if it were me. Well, let me throw my two cents in here. I did yesterday. I'll be brief as, uh, as brief as I can. There are two things about Schneider. Um, number one, do you make a move with the bullpen when he did? Your starting pitcher has done a good job. He's thrown 93 pitches. His arm is not falling off. And besides which, it's the postseason. I leave him in there. I don't go to the bullpen at all. But that's not going to happen in today's baseball, I suppose, at least not with this team or this manager. Number two, you have the bases loaded. You obviously feel you need to get an out. That's why you're replacing your starting pitcher. But you go to your fourth or fifth best reliever in that situation. And that boggles my mind. You know, you guys talked about mismanaging the bullpen. Well, he did mismanage the bullpen in this game. But it's to be conceded also that this was a bullpen that was 
suspect all year long. This is, was, there was no, there was no hundred mile an hour guy there. Well, Every Bob. team that the Blue Jays have faced have thrown a hundred mile an hour guy. You had a starting pitcher throwing 103 the other day. You had two Seattle relievers, I think, that hit a hundred in this series. You had nobody in the Blue Jay bullpen that was close to that. Romano at 97 was the best. And that eventually is going to catch up to you. And it did in this game. David, I, li Hodge. I listen every day, Bob. And uh, I, I take your comments about uh, 100 mile an hour plus pitchers. And I remind you that the fastest pitch thrown this season was thrown by Ryan Helsley of the St. Louis Cardinals, who threw most of his pitches over 100, 104 was clocked as the fastest pitch this season. Ryan Helsley came into a three nothing lead, ninth inning save situation against the Phillies in game one of that series and gave up four runs and the Cardinals unceremoniously bowed out in two games. Um, I, I don't put a whole lot of stock in how fast a guy is throwing. Uh, I think it can help if he's a great pitcher uh, all round. But, um, you know, I don't need Jordan Romano to be throwing any harder to be one of the best closers uh, in baseball. I just need Jordan Romano to get three outs and not be asked to get six outs.